Your firm's website is about your client. It's not about you. What do you do for clients? Use their language. Mimic the questions that they ask you. They don't necessarily care to read a, you know, multi-paragraph biography about all of the things that you did in law school. That doesn't matter. How do you solve their problems? What's your experience solving their problems? And, um, and be humble. <laughs> uh, and, and be personable. Um, let your personality come through. Be casual like you are with your clients. Make them understand that you have empathy for them. When someone goes to a legal Zoom to get their legal matter solved, they're paying a flat fee and they're getting a quick deal. You bring the personality, the experience, you know, and, and the, the kind of one-on-one -on -one customer care with that, and you're going to have to use your website to express that. Law firms often think, well, we don't need a site. We get all our referrals from former clients or from other attorneys. But the reality is, if you come to me and ask me for a referral for an attorney, I've got a, not, a lot of attorneys in my head I can refer to. First thing I'm going to do is Google them, find their website, and send a link to my friend. So you really do need a web presence. The other thing is controlling the information about you on the internet because if I go Google your name and your presence is basically AVO, um, Fine Law, uh, directories, other things like that, um, possibly Yelp, you're not controlling the information someone else is, so why would you not have a website that controls the message about your firm? We talk about goals for your website. Do you want to get new clients? Do you just want to have a business card presence online so people can find your contact information? It really depends on what you want it to do for you, but at the very least, you want to express how to get in touch and what your practice areas are and what you do for people. And I have to admit, I'm a big fan of giving people a sense of how you charge. Do you do contingency work? Do you do flat fees? Do you do transaction? You know, like, you don't have to say how much you charge, just give people a sense because they're shopping uh, in many, many instances. And in the same way that if you go to a restaurant and you look at the menu and it doesn't have the price, you think, well, if you need to ask, I can't afford it. <laughs> so tell them how you charge. First step, get a domain name a real one from a domain um, provider like GoDaddy or Hover. And then go find either, you can build your own website, you can use Wix or Weebly or um, Squarespace or WordPress, just depends on how technical you are and how much time you have to spend on it. If you hire someone, there's a whole lot of people doing websites for law firms, you wanna make sure that they don't promise what they can't deliver. You also wanna make sure that you own the content you understand the terms of the contract, um, that it's uh, not long term so that you're not roped into something for multiple years, but ultimately that you can update your own content and it's portable. If you want to move, it's yours to take. So if you build a site on Wix or Weebly or something like that, it's very hard to export to a different site. Um, WordPress is nice and the reason WordPress is so popular is because they have an import export feature. You just export all the content um, and upload it into another site. If your bar association has a practice management advisor, or somebody who's fulfilling that role, that's a good place to start. There are also some really good legal marketing conferences that if you really wanted an immersion, um, that's, that's something to start. But also just reading your bar journal, the end of the law practice um, columns, going to your solo and small firm conferences, um, talking to other lawyers who have good websites where you go, hey, how'd you do that? That looks really great. Who did your site? Um, and if you're lucky, they'll share with you.